Hello and welcome to a short edition of the 10 buck test bench. Why I'm filming this is because I'm waiting for materials to come in for the Midwest Radio 916. But this thing was laying around here and uh, I had to once again prove that you can get test equipment for 10 bucks that is decent. Last uh, fall at the Deerfield, New Hampshire Ham Fest, near underscore fest is their web page. I was walking around and this scope was sitting here on a guy's table and on top, still up here, is the, he had $15 on it. Marked down from 20, it says works 20 and 15. And I just stopped to chat with him. I had no interest in this scope. I have enough oscilloscopes in my life. But I said, You're asking the right price. I said, An old analog scope, dollar megahertz, because it didn't have any probes with it. That's my probe that's on there. And he said, 10 bucks takes it away. Now, I did not go shopping for a scope, I did not want a scope, but I just keep tripping over these things, uh, ham fest after ham fest after ham fest, and people that say they cannot find these things, I'm sorry, you're not trying. You can't show up at noontime or one in the afternoon and expect to find these bargains. By then, people are packing up, going home. You gotta get there when the gates open, and walk in and start looking for stuff. Ten dollars. Now is it perfect? No, it's a dual trace scope. Both traces work. There's the other trace. It's absolutely filthy. It looks like it's had a hard life, but the voltage per division is correct. The time base is correct. The BNC connectors, the silver is all oxidized and there's a lot of dirt on the front panel. This thing's going to need some cleaning. And the switches need to be cleaned. The, con the switches, you can see the what's happening as I change the ranges here. You can see it. And sometimes it doesn't work. You've got to play with it a little bit to get it to work. Dirty switches. It's going to take a little contact cleaner in there. Work the switches back and forth. ACDC works. Everything on this works. Ten dollars. You just got to get there early and look, folks. Um, again, I wasn't looking for a scope. This puts me back to... Oh, can I count how many I have at this point? One, two, three, four, five. I, st I have eight oscilloscopes. Five, six, yes, eight scopes here. Didn't want another scope, but for the 10 buck test bench, this is perfect. A true $10 test bench thing. And you can see it needs, you know, the switches need cleaning. Whoop, see it stopped working just then. That's just dirty contacts on the switch because this thing hasn't been cared for. So we're going to take it apart, spray a little cleaner in there, and see what we end up with. Well, let me get the cover off. All right, we have the cover off. And as expected, this thing is absolutely filthy. There's all kinds of dirt down here on the circuit board. There's dirt here. You can see it all over the CRT shield on top of the transformer. All of the pots are filthy. So I'll we'll spend a little bit of time cleaning this up. I'm not going to go nuts on it. It's a $10 scope after all, and I have more scopes than I know what to do with. But this will be a, a decent addition for the 10 buck test bench. I will probably take the bottom cover off, take this shield off, and go in with a Q-tip with deoxid on it. Instead of spraying everything in here, you don't want to spray on these trim caps. It'll change their value. I don't have the paperwork for this, but the outside, these are marked for DC balance, DC gain. What else was there on the outside? Uh, step attenuation balance, uh, gain, and DC balance. So the critical adjustments you want are marked 
basically DC balance when you're changing ranges you don't want the trace moving around pretty simple uh, for a quick and dirty scope we've got an intensity input on the back which is handy to have we'll clean this up we'll spend a little bit of time cleaning it clean up the switches and we'll see what we've got and I'll take a toothbrush and some Windex to this front panel and clean this up a little bit because this is pretty nasty but other than that I'm not going to put a lot of time into this it'll just be a, a workhorse on the bench we'll be right back all right toothbrush Windex I spent 10 minutes on this front panel now uh, there's something behind the plastic here leaving a little black mark I'm not going to bother disassembling it to try to clean that from behind there it's not on the screen it's below the shadow mask on the screen so that's not going to hurt anything but the BNC connectors cleaned up all of the knobs cleaned up there's no scratches on the front panel that I can find it actually looks fairly new now that I've taken most of the grunge off now the cabinet itself is a different story it's in pretty grody shape we'll probably spray that down with some Windex before we put it back together I took a soft brush, uh, let's see if I can find one, soft brush like this and went inside with an air hose and loosened up most of the grunge that was stuck in there that wouldn't come out just with compressed air. And now I'm going to go inside and clean the switches. All right, we've got the cover off the uh, range switches here in the front. And again, you don't just want to go spraying cleaner in here willy-nilly. You've got all these trimmer caps in here. Those are for frequency compensation, and unless you have the service manual for your scope, and I don't have the one for this one. I did a quick look online. The 515B was out there, but I couldn't find one for the 515A. It doesn't really matter. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to go in here with a Q-tip with some deoxit and just put it on each of the wafer switches inside very sparingly work the switches around clean up the contacts and put it back together if you get that contact cleaner in these capacitors you can alter the capacitance most of it should evaporate but if you wash dirt in between there yada 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 then you got to go through and do the calibration for all the frequency compensation again this is just going to be a quick and dirty bench scope I'm not uh, too concerned about it as long as the range switches work reliably I'll be happy you don't want to do this on a high-end scope because you can completely alter the characteristics of the front end then again something like a LaCroix that's one gigahertz bandwidth isn't going to have this type of a attenuator in the front end it's going to have something more or less sealed up with high quality contacts and you're probably not going to have any problems with the with the attenuator switches this is a low-end scope and uh, you know of course the care wasn't taken in the manufacturing for these but this will be a perfectly serviceable bench scope and uh, so I'm gonna go in there and clean things up and we'll see how I how much uh, success I had okay let's see how we did plug in our probe here give it a ground pick up on the calibration point oh much 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 better look at that very solid now we don't lose our trace it doesn't disappear on us uh, yep everything's working well oh what did I do there we go Let's try the other channel. Uh, I gotta find my way around the scope. Okay, channel two. Now, uh, how do I get it to trigger on channel B? Uh, I haven't played with this enough to know my way around it yet. Oh, maybe here? Ah, there we go. So, channel two locks right in, nice and clean. Perfect. Ten dollar scope, ready to rock and roll. I'll clean up the outside of the case a little bit, throw the covers back on. I've got a bench scope for ten bucks. 
And there we have it, back in its home, functional. We change ranges now. It reliably goes to the next range. Before, every time I did that, you're going to see a little noise during the switching. That's fairly normal, but what would happen before I'd change range and the trace would disappear. And I'd have to wiggle it and wiggle it and wiggle it and it would come back. But the DC balance might be off just a whisker, but not bad. I can live with it. It'll be a fine little workhorse on the bench. Uh, 15 megahertz, absolutely perfect for working on old AM radios. Uh, just about anything you need to do uh, will be fine. Uh, I know the equipment snobs out there are going to say, oh, it's only 15 megahertz, but I've got other stuff that works all the way up to a gig, so if I need it, I have it. But for this bench, for AM radio work, you don't need anything more. Ten bucks did it. Nice little scope. It even looks decent now that it's cleaned up. Hopefully next time I'm up, or next time I make a video, I'll have some uh, materials in and I can move forward with the Midwest. I've got, let's see, four, five and a half weeks now until I'm gone. And I'll be in Thailand for the winter. But I'm hoping to get some more done. At least get the turntable put together and perhaps get the drawer built before I leave. Why have we got an Uncal light lit? Oh, that's why. There we go. Now the sweep's calibrated. I'm the radio mechanic. For 10 bucks, you can get some bargains out there if you get out of bed and get there when the gate's open. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.